Hi there. In this video, I will be introducing the turning operation using a lathe machine. I will show you how to take a raw stock and reduce its diameter to create a circular surface throughout the workpiece. Depending on the cutting conditions, the surface can be smooth or rough. Changing the cutting conditions will improve the surface finish as needed. Turning operations can be done on any workpiece diameter. To turn a workpiece, firstly, clamp the workpiece onto the chuck. Ensure facing is completed for a smooth face. A smooth face allows the start of the turning operation to be free of any interrupted cuts. Secondly, set up the facing and turning tool on the quick change tool post and ensure the tool height is set correctly. Next, rotate the tool post and lock it in position. Rotating the tool post ensures there is sufficient clearance angle between the tool and the workpiece. Having no clearance angle will cause shattering and a poor surface finish. Thirdly, set up the machine with the correct gear ratio for the appropriate spindle speed. Finally, switch on the machine and set the spindle speed. The spindle speed is dependent on the workpiece material and diameter. Bring the tool close to the circular surface slowly to approximate the tool's position with respect to the workpiece. Then, move the tool to the face of the workpiece without adjusting the cross feed. If needed, bring the tool closer to the workpiece again without cutting to check its position. Bring the tool back to the face of the workpiece and increase the depth of cut by 0.5 to 1 mm by rotating the cross feed's handwheel clockwise. This moves the tool towards the workpiece center axis. Next, rotate the carriage handwheel slowly and consistently to cut the material. This technique helps to ensure a smooth and consistent finish. Notice how the hands are placed, moved and shifted. The tool feed rate, which is how fast the carriage is moved, and the manner of how the carriage is moved along the workpiece, greatly affects the finish. Chips may collect at the tool. Do not allow chips to accumulate, as this can ruin the surface finish and pose a danger to you. Stop the machine and use the long nose plier to remove the chips. Never use your hands, as chips are hot and sharp. Do not move the tool away, as this may result in inaccurate workpiece dimensions. Restart the machine and continue the turning operation. Be cautious as the tool is moved closer to the chuck. There are no safety devices to prevent tool collision. When sufficient workpiece length is turned, switch off the machine and retract the tool away from the workpiece surface using the cross slide. Then move the carriage to move the tool away. Check if the entire workpiece diameter has a new surface. If not, repeat the process till the entire surface is cut. Depending on the cutting conditions and the feed technique, the surface finish may vary. During the turning operation, the workpiece diameter can be machined without constant measurement with the vernier caliper. This is called turning to size. To do this, a fixed starting point, also called a datum, must be set on the cross slide. Then, by using the cross slide dial during machining, the workpiece diameter can be reduced to the needed dimension. Ensure facing is complete prior to turning to size. To set the x-axis datum on the cross slide, also called zeroing the x-axis datum, rotate the cross slide's handwheel till the tool touches the workpiece surface. Then, hold the handwheel tightly and rotate the dial till the zero mark is aligned to the reference mark. Depending on the machine model, the increments on the cross slide handwheel dial refers to either radius or diameter. In this machine, the dial increments refers to the diameter. After zeroing, move the tool away from the workpiece surface and to the end of the workpiece. Rotate the cross slide handwheel clockwise while reading the dial to move the tool towards the workpiece. 
Then, using the carriage, move the tool across to turn the workpiece to the targeted diameter. For example, a workpiece with diameter 64 mm was zeroed with the cross slide. The workpiece diameter needs to be reduced to 59.7 mm. As the targeted diameter is much smaller, the workpiece is cut with multiple passes to control the depth of cut. For the first pass, the cross slide dial is rotated to 1 mm. This sets the depth of cut to be 0.5 mm and reduces the diameter by 1 mm to 63 mm. The second pass, the cross slide dial is rotated to 2 mm to maintain the depth of cut of 0.5 mm and the diameter is reduced to 62 mm. This is repeated twice, resulting in the workpiece diameter to be reduced to 60 mm. It is good practice to measure the workpiece prior to final few cuts to ensure there were no zeroing errors. Finally, the cross slide dial is rotated to 4.3 mm, thus reducing the depth of cut to 0.15 mm and turning the workpiece to the needed diameter of 59.7 mm. Measure the workpiece to confirm the dimensions. During the turning operation, the workpiece length and diameter can be machined without constant measurement with the vernier caliper. This is called turning to length. To do this, two datums must be set on the carriage, as well as the cross slide. Then, by using the carriage and cross slide dials during machining, the workpiece diameter can be reduced to the needed dimension, along a specific length. Ensure facing is complete prior to turning to size. To set the Z-axis datum, also called zeroing the Z-axis datum, rotate the carriage handwheel till the tool is touching the workpiece surface. Then, hold the handwheel tightly and rotate the dial till the zero mark is aligned to the reference mark. Reading the dial helps to measure the distance moved by the carriage. Do not touch the compound slide after zeroing. Next, zero the X-axis datum too. After zeroing, move the tool away from the workpiece surface and to the end of the workpiece. Rotate the cross slide handwheel clockwise while reading the dial to move the tool towards the workpiece. Then, using the carriage, move the tool across while reading the dial to turn the workpiece to the targeted diameter along a specific length. If needed, tap the handwheel into position. By setting datums and measuring the tool's movements along the X and Z axes, a workpiece can be machined to correct length and diameter easily. However, you must ensure there are no zeroing errors by checking the workpiece dimensions prior to the final cuts. As the workpiece may come in various lengths, it may be necessary to use a center mounted on the tailstock to support the opposite end of the workpiece. A live center is usually used as it rotates with the workpiece. To use a center, there must be a pilot hole drilled into the workpiece for the center's tip to sit in. To create a pilot hole, facing operation must be done on the workpiece to ensure a flat surface is present. This will allow the drill bit to drill without deflection or unbalanced cutting forces. Then, using a center drill mounted onto a drill chuck, which is mounted onto the tailstock, a pilot hole is drilled into the workpiece. The depth of the drill bit must be sufficient enough to create the 90 degrees tapered hole. After creating the pilot hole, the workpiece is extended to the required machining clearance length to be supported by the live center mounted on the tailstock. The workpiece must be reclamped rigidly.
the tool is moved to the end of the workpiece and the carriage handle dial is set to zero. Next, the tool is moved to the outer diameter of the workpiece at the center of its length and the cross slide handle dial is set to zero. By setting datums, the turning to length and turning to size can be done accurately. The tailstock is slid forward and locked into position. Then, the barrel is extended till the revolving center is firmly in the pilot hole. Once in position, the barrel is locked. Finally move the tool into position and use the dials to track the depth of cut and turning length. Once ready, the turning process can begin. With the use of the center, the turning process can be done without any workpiece deflections. This also allows fine cuts or passes with low depth of cuts to be done accurately. The demonstrations you saw are the typical turning operation for various workpiece sizes. Ensure you are aware of the cutting speed required for the workpiece material and size. Cutting speeds for aluminium and steel are very different, and using the correct speeds will improve your machining time and quality. Speak with an SP staff if you are turning steel or some other unique workpieces.